Maca's guides. Hey guys, Maca here, and today we will be taking a look through the easiest Xbox Game Pass games for gamer score. This is an updated video. I have created videos like this in the past. However, since the Xbox Game Pass catalog is ever changing, these videos need an update every now and again. And since it's been six months since the last video, and a lot of things have actually changed, I'd figured I figured I would go through the list of new games uh, as well as the old ones, basically everything in the catalog, and talk about the easiest stuff for you guys to get gamer score in, completions in. And at the end of the video, we'll also talk a little bit about Xbox Game Pass PC, which does offer separate achievement lists for a lot of really easy games. So make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video. You can also upgrade to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate for just a dollar right now. I think you have only two or three days left before that deal runs out, though. So let's just shift over to the Game Pass tab in the dashboard. And then let's go to Show All. And usually what I do in these videos is I like to categorize the games. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the seven easiest games in the catalog. Then we'll have another category of games under five hours. Then we'll have a third category of games under 10 hours. So if you're just looking for the easiest of the easiest of the easiest, this next couple minutes is probably most important to you. Now, in my opinion, right now, the easiest game in Game Pass to get a thousand gamer score in is Tacoma. Right here, this is by the people who made Gone Home, and I do have a walkthrough on my channel available for this game. I think the walkthrough is 45 minutes. If you're following along, it'll probably uh, take you around an hour to get through the game and grab everything you need. A lot of, uh, for a lot of these games, by the way, I will have some sort of guide to help you guys with, so keep that in mind. Next up, what we're going to do is uh, The Gardens Between, which is I th what I think is the second easiest game in Game Pass. Also have a video for this one, and the game should take you around an hour to an hour and a half, maybe around two hours if you want to take your time with some of the puzzles on your own before you get a little frustrated. Then what I think the third easiest game is will be called Old Man's Journey. Sorry, just relearning my alphabet a little bit here. There we go, Old Man's Journey. This is a cool little kind of storytelling puzzly game where you're adjusting hills in order to kind of connect the background and the foreground. It's actually a really cool and unique game, and you can do it in about an hour and a half to two hours, in my opinion. Next up, the fourth easiest game, in my opinion, is Abzu. So Abzu is a game that's been on Game Pass for quite a while. I know a lot of people have already played this and gotten uh, this one done. I have a video guide, full 100% walkthrough on the channel for those of you who want it. But Abzu is still there for a lot of you guys. And uh, a little bit of a hint, we can play Abzu a second time on PC for more achievements on the Windows 10 version. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, though. Then what we have for the fifth easiest game, in my opinion, is uh, all the way at the very bottom, What Remains of Edith Finch. Also, probably one of the best games in Game Pass. I would highly suggest you enjoy this game and play it, but if you only want the gamer score and the completion, you have that option as well. And like many of these uh, games, I do have a video available on my channel. Link will be in the description. Then next up, we have, we'll go all the way back to the top into the Bs for Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. Another game that can be completed quite easily in under three hours. However, all the achievements are missable. So you can actually beat the game and still have zero out of a thousand. You'll probably need to follow a guide for this. One is available on the channel. Then we'll go back into the Ts and we will go to The Touring Test. This is the seventh easiest game in my opinion. It's a really fun first-person puzzle game, similar in the vein of Portal with just uh, slightly different puzzle mechanics. I really like this game and would suggest you try it. If you are into puzzlers, you could probably beat it in under three hours. So those are the seven easiest games in Game Pass. If you already have all of them done, we'll go into the second category of games under five hours. And we'll be doing the next ones kind of alphabetically down the list instead of organizing them in order of easiest to hardest. It makes a lot more sense to do them alphabetically, starting with iDARB, a game that's been out for a while. I think it was free with Games with Gold in like February of like 2017 or something. I know it used to have some connect based achievements, but they've patched those out, as many of you let me know in the comments of some of the past videos. 
So you can get this game done in not that long. It's not that hard. I think it might require a couple of extra controllers in order to make it as easy as possible. But iDARP is a really good place to start if you have finished all the games we've already talked about. So an, a game that you can do under five hours, you can actually do this one under three hours, but I have a hard time calling it easy because it does take quite a bit of skill and uh, you need to be good at like retro games. ACA Neo Geo Metal Slug X. This is the only ACA Neo Geo game inside of Game Pass. It is one of the harder ones, but it is still technically under three hours if you are good enough to beat it and get all the high scores and uh, play in you know the time attack mode and the caravan mode and all the other modes. You can beat this one quite quickly, but you do need a decent amount of skill. Now, next up on the list, I actually have a game. Uh, it's Below. Now, I won't say this is an easy thousand by any means, but you can get 500 gamer score in this game in less than two hours. So if you're just looking to get, like, bang out a couple of uh, points as quickly as possible, you can get 300 and Below in, like, 15 minutes, and you can get 500 in about an hour or two. So you can keep that one in mind if that's something you're into and you need some last-minute points. Uh, to beat a friend or maybe uh, top the monthly leaderboard. Next up, a brand new game that came out at the beginning of June is River Bond. This one will take you around four to five hours. And from what I've heard, it's actually not too bad. Going down the list a little bit into the tease, we have Thomas Was Alone. A very old game at this point, but still quite good. I would also highly recommend playing it with the developer commentary on. If you've already done it or already played it and want a little bit of a new experience, uh, this is a cool little puzzly platformer uh, that will only take you a couple of hours. And then right above that, we have The Walking Dead Michonne. All of The Walking Dead games are easy, but in terms of the quickest one, The Walking Dead Michonne is probably the only one that'll take you around five hours. All of the other ones tend to be a little bit longer. We'll talk about them a little bit later. So now we're going to go into the third category of games, and those are games under 10 hours. Some of these will be harder than others. Uh, some of them will be slightly longer than others, but we'll go through the list alphabetically. So next up is After Charge, and the only reason I'm bringing up After Charge is because it's leaving Game Pass on July 9th. So we only have one week more to play it. If you've already started it, I would highly suggest trying to finish it. I personally got a 1,000 gamer score back in like February or March, and it took me 30 hours. However, there have been a lot of updates in the game since then. One of the updates uh, that really cut down on time was the fact that there is now a permanent double XP in the game, and it is like a, a leveling grind thing that kind of took a while. So instantly it became a 15-hour completion once they had a double XP. And they also added the ability to play against bots, which can make matches go a lot faster. So I think right now you can actually do after charge in right around the 10 hour mark. Again, this game leaves Game Pass July 9th. Then we have Costume Quest 2. Obviously, you probably want to play this game around Halloween, but it is an option out there for you guys who are into the RPG style stuff. Also, in my last video, I did mention Cluster Truck. If you are incredibly skilled, it can be done very easily. However, as most people let me know, it is a very difficult game and you shouldn't go in expecting a thousand gamer score out of it. Then next up, we have a really easy game actually that was just recently added and that is Goat Simulator, which I do have videos for. You can get a thousand of a thousand in this game in about three or four hours, depending on how long it takes you to do, to do the Flappy Goat achievement. The only thing you do want to keep in mind is that this game does have a lot of DLC and I think you have to pay extra for it. So you can get a thousand, but if you'd like the full 100%, I think there's like 2,375 gamer score available and you would need to buy a lot of DLC and also the DLC takes a lot longer to finish. Then we'll go into the H's. We'll start with Headlander. Uh, I think, believe this is an eight to 10 hour completion. It's one. Of, it's actually a pretty good game from what I've heard and that's an option for you. Next up is Hellblade. Highly recommend this game. Also around the eight hour mark. Maybe six to eight hours for most people. You will need a collectibles guide for this game, though. I do have one on the channel and would highly recommend you at least try this game one time through. Then we have Hello Neighbor. This is not an easy game by any means, but I know some people have used it to boost their gamer score. It'll take you around eight to ten hours. I believe there are some video guides out there, but it's a game where it relies very heavily on AI manipulation, and I'm not sure how consistent the AI is from game to game, so it can be quite difficult and maybe a little bit frustrating for some. Then we'll go down to Hue. Hue is a puzzle game. I think it takes around six hours. 
and you manipulate the colors of the background in order to kind of get across the level. Human Fall Flat, it has a completion time of what I believe is 8 to 10 hours. The thing you want to keep in mind is that it also has a ton of DLC. I believe most of the DLC is free. However, a lot of it is not as easy as the base 1000. Then we have Inner Space. I believe this game takes around 6 hours, maybe 8 hours, but there isn't much info out there about it. So you might need to uh, kind of figure things out for yourself as you play along. Then we'll go into the L's and we'll start with Life is Strange. All of the Life is Strange stuff is pretty easy and usually comes in around 10 hours. The easiest and quickest one is going to be Life is Strange Before the Storm. It only has three episodes. Each episode is around two to two and a half hours, meaning you can get a thousand in about six or seven hours. Then you have Life is Strange The Complete Season, season one. You can get a thousand in this. There's five episodes all around two hours long. You can get a thousand in about 10 hours. Then you have Life is Strange Season or Life is Strange 2, and these episodes are being added to Game Pass, although they are a little bit delayed from the original launch. Right now, Episode 3 is already out, and I think it's coming to Game Pass soon, but once they're all out, you'll be able to get 1,000 in Life is Strange 2 in about 10 to 12 hours. Then we have Manual Samuel. I believe this is a 6 to 8 hour completion, but I don't know much more about it other than it is a very unique looking game. Max the Curse of the Brotherhood, another game. I think it's around eight hours. It's a puzzle game. I actually really enjoyed this one. And uh, I believe this was um, pretty much a launch title for the Xbox One. So it has a little bit of years on it, but it has aged pretty well. Then what we'll do next is go into the O's and go for Oxenfree. Oxenfree, you do need to play the game a total of three times, but each playthrough is only around three to three and a half hours. So you can beat the game in around 9 or 10 hours, and it is actually a really great game. You can get 950 in only two playthroughs. So if you're looking to kind of maximize your time, uh, Oxenfree is actually a pretty good game to start with. Then we have a game, we'll skip the peas. Quantum Break is easy, but it's going to take you 12 to 15 hours. I know a lot of people mentioned it in the last video. I kind of skipped on it because it was right up in that 15-hour range and does require you to play on hard. But uh, I know some players might want to use that for gamer score as well. Rhyme. Uh, this game is quite long and has a lot of different things to collect. You might need some type of a picture guide or a text guide in order to make sure you don't miss anything. But Rhyme can be completed in around 5 to 8 hours. Then we have Riptide GP Renegade. It is like a jet ski water racing game. Uh, it takes around 8 to 10 hours. Rise and Shine is not an easy 1000, but it is an easy 900 that you can do in about 2 hours. Again, if you're looking to maximize your time, Rise and Shine is probably a pretty good game to do. Then I have one that might actually surprise a lot of you, and that is Rocket League. The original 1000 in Rocket League takes around 8 to 10 hours, which is pretty quick. But additionally, Rocket League also has a ton of free DLC, bringing the total amount of gamer score in Rocket League to 2,200. And all of it is completely free in just installing the game since all of the extra things are just title updates. So you can grab probably 1500 to 2000 gamer score in around that 10 to 12 hour mark. But there are a couple of grindy things right at the end that might take you a little bit longer. But if you're starting from fresh and you're just starting Rocket League for the first time, it's actually not a bad time to go into it just for the gamer score. We'll go into S and then the only S game that is easy from what my little research has done uh, concluded is Super Lucky's Tale. Most people would say this is a six to eight hour completion. I have a walkthrough of this game, which is around three to four hours long. You probably can't follow the walkthrough at full speed because you'll probably have to pause it every now and again. But Super Lucky's Tale, it's actually not a bad game. Uh, I know there's a newer one coming to Switch, and I think there's probably going to be a Super Lucky's Tale 2 at some point. That is an option for you guys if you're looking for, you know, maybe a more casual game uh, that does offer a decent gamer score. Then we'll go into the tease. I think it's weird because just kind of a little bit of an offshoot point. Uh, in your My Games and Apps, it no longer uses the in the T section. Instead, it like the escapists would now be in your E category. But in the Game Pass library, it's still sorted, whereas T is like the letter that the game name starts with. So it's a little bit confusing because when you go to My Games and Apps, all these games are in different order than if you're looking at them through the Game Pass menu. Nonetheless, that was a complete off point. We have The Walking Dead. So The Walking Dead, A New Frontier, four episodes. Each episode's about two and a half hours, a thousand and ten hours. 
season two and season one. You can do both of those in around the eight to 10 hour mark as well. So if you're looking to, you know, really play The Walking Dead for four days straight, you can start with uh, first season, second season, Michonne, and then New Frontier. And in probably 30 to 35 hours, you can have 4,000 gamer score in those games. And then we have Thimbleweed Park, 8 to 10 hour completion. Don't know much about it otherwise, though. Now, the next category we'll move on to is actually Game Pass for PC. So let me switch my screen real quick. All right, so here we are on my PC now. This is the new Xbox beta app. You will need the most recent version of Windows in order to get this to install. I believe the version number you're looking for is 1903. And then you can install this beta app and you will have access to Game Pass. You will need a subscription to either Game Pass for PC or to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate in order to take advantage of this. But there are a lot of games here. Well, not a lot. There are a couple of games on PC that do offer Easy Gamer Score as well. And these are separate lists from those available on console. Now, there is no way to sort all the games in alphabetical order right now, which I think is an absolute travesty, and I don't know how this happened. But like, if you go to All Games right here and then Show All, it kind of just shows them in a completely random order. Uh, and there's no way to like filter or sort these. So there are a ton of games in Game Pass for PC, but I'm going to be basically just using the search feature in the top corner in order to uh, do all this. Now, games like Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, they won't have separate achievement lists. There are only certain games that do offer separate achievement lists. Again, Tacoma, a game, again, that doesn't offer a separate achievement list. So the games that do offer, first of all, easy achievements and separate achievement lists, we'll start off with Abzu. Abzu is a super easy game. A lot of you might have already played it, but it is also available on the PC and offers a separate stackable achievement list from the Xbox version. Then next up, another one we have is the ACA Neo Geo game, Metal Slug X. Again, this is another game you can stack, has a separate list, and although it is a little bit difficult, it can be completed very quickly if you have the skill necessary. Next up, another game is Goat Simulator. Okay, apparently you can't type half the name. So Goat Simulator for Windows 10. Again, this is another game that has a separate achievement list. And it's a thousand gamer score in around three to four hours, but there's a ton of DLC. You would just click on the name, install it. It would show up in the left here next to your games. And then you would just, you know, click it to launch it and play it. Then we have only two more games. One of them is called The Last Door. Sorry if you hear me typing. The Last Door Season 2. I don't know much about this game, to be honest. But from what I've heard, it can be completed in around six, maybe eight hours. And it's one of the easier games that is available in Game Pass for PC. It's also a really small download size. It's apparently a platformer and came out less than a year ago. So there's another option for you if you are so inclined. And then last but not least is Hellblade. Hellblade does have a separate achievement list for the Windows 10 version, meaning you can play it on Xbox for a thousand gamer score and then play it again on your PC for another thousand gamer score. So that right there is my updated video for the easiest Xbox games for gamer score on Xbox Game Pass. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. Make sure to leave comments if you have any questions or maybe there's some new games added or some games taken away from the program. Uh, I will update this video when I decide that enough has changed in the games catalog. But feel free to leave a comment or tweet me and let me know if you think that the video needs an update and maybe I'll make it sooner rather than later. Uh, there's actually a really, uh, really great catalog in Xbox Game Pass PC of just like good games that, you know, maybe aren't the easiest gamer score, but there's just good games here. Uh, additionally, there's actually some cool games that only have, for example, Messenger is a game that's a Devolver digital game. It never came to Xbox, but it did come to the PC with Xbox achievements. So there's a lot of really cool stuff like that you can do, like play the messenger for achievements on your computer. I thought some achievement hunters might uh, want to know about that kind of uh, information. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and hopefully I see you next time. A special thanks to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. Shout out to Double O. See you soon. Peace.